One of the most dangerous practices that you can perform with a bandsaw is to cut cylindrical tubing. It doesn't matter if you're cutting lengthwise or widthwise, wide or narrow, or even PVC pipe. There is an extremely dangerous chance that the rod will be pulled from your fingers and bind up into the bandsaw blade, regardless to how tightly you hold the material to the table. I know because I've made the mistake several times in the last 20 years, leading to damaged blades and close calls. But it's not limited to just tubing. Placing anything on the edge or even cutting logs that are not perfectly parallel to the table can have the same disastrous results. Let me show you a jig that you can make easily that will correct this problem as well as a bonus feature. We'll start by cutting two lengths of wood sections about six inches long. From here there are a couple different options to make a half box for this project. You can miter the corners, add in a bit of glue and tape, or you can box joint the corner. Of the two options in this video, I will be going with the box joint simply due to strength it provides. If you do use the mitered corners option, you might consider adding splines. I will add before I start this video that there is a prototype version I started with and a better version at the end. I do this to keep it simple enough for those that want to make it with a few extended ideas at the end. I'm going to call this the cradle. After we're square with the cradle and have a nice 90 degree angle, we'll set it aside and let it dry. While we're waiting for it to dry, we'll make the cradle base. We'll need to measure the blade of our bandsaw to the miter slot to find where the valley of our cradle will rest. Since the cradle will need to sit upright in the stand, we'll need to make 45 degree angles, which is very easily done with the square. I use the 5 degree mark as the base point to draw the 45 degree angles. After both are marked, we'll hit the bandsaw and very carefully cut out the area between the angles we created. When both have been fitted with the cradle and all looks like it fits perfectly, we'll focus on cutting the horizontal end of our cradle base, measuring an inch from the V we cut. This is what yours should look like after hitting the bandsaw. This should be plenty of room to get a knurled knob in to adjust distance between the miter slot and the blade. The slot we carve out should be just large enough to fit a number 10 bolt. We'll make an expansion bar for our miter slot that allow us to lock our jig down which is important in keeping the jig hands free as we run material over the cradle bed. I cut mine down so that it's just slightly under the height of my miter slot. You'll want it to slide without any difficulty. Find the center of your expansion bar by connecting diagonals and drawing an X. Using an awl to mark the center. I use a quarter inch drill bit as it fit the bolt size of my knob and then a fluted countersink bit so that the cone end of my bolt will fit flush with the expansion bar. It's important to cut out a slot here as well as drill a couple holes to allow expansion to be possible here. Which I brought back to my quarter inch drill bit. I used a coping saw to carve out the center, but you could probably just use a band saw to cut into the center at an angle. Whatever you do, remember that the slot doesn't need to be very big.
If you're a veteran to this channel, you'll remember this technique I've used with other projects. We'll simply cut into the top of our bolt with some sort of metal cutting tool using a couple nuts and a vise to hold it in place. In the last video, I used a 3 64th inch drill bit. Today we'll go with a 3 64th inch cotter pin. Much cheaper that way. We'll snug it in and snip off the loop. Before I use epoxy, hot glue works just as well and is quicker. Once it's cooled, we'll pop it out and fit it in. We'll put the jig on the bandsaw and mark our bolt placement. If you're using the same bolts as I am, be sure to switch to a 3 16th inch drill bit for both of these holes and to once again use a fluted bit to countersink the bolt heads. I use number 10 knurled knobs, but in a pinch, you could use a couple of number 10 nuts. Just watch your TPIs as knurled knobs are quite often made for finer threads. To attach the cradle to the base, I used four dowel rods, but you could very easily drill a couple of pilot holes and use screws to attach it. If you haven't seen my vertical drilling rig, check it out. Link will be at the end. To temporarily attach the base, I used a little hot glue before using a long quarter inch drill bit to drill out the holes in the base. Drilling the hole square on the drill press really helped out a lot. A little glue on a dowel, a couple taps with the mallet, and a good rooster crow and will set up the joint perfectly. I used a pole saw to finish things up. As you can see, this thing is nearly impossible to move. The expansion bar is unbeatably strong and has never failed me. Okay, before we go on, I'll give the pros and cons of this jig so far. It's only fair. On my bandsaw that uses a narrow blade, resawing didn't get any better with this jig. Of course, I didn't really expect it to. Cutting tubing or dowels was nearly flawless, but I wanted something that gave me more accurate 90 degree cuts. Marking my dowels, I was able to accomplish this, but I really wanted it to be easier to make repeatable cuts. Switching to my resawing bandsaw with the half inch blade was much more refreshing, but it meant that I needed to make a longer cradle base. Here I just used a piece of plywood to move the base in closer. A problem I felt needed to fix was the finish of a cut which left its stock momentarily stranded in the air. Now let me show you how this project evolved. Instead of just the dual base pieces, I decided to make more of a box. In order to make the box, I decided to once again use dowel rods as it is an easy joint. I made my first set of holes and used carpet tape to attach the second base piece. I transferred the dowel hole pattern by using a Forstner bit to mark the holes. After drilling the holes, I installed my dowels. I could have gone with my jig but found it easier to hook the cradle over the side and drill into a piece of pine. You'll also notice that I made this cradle larger in both height and length. To address the problem I mentioned before with the stock being left in the air, I wanted the blade to be inside the jig giving a little bit more support to the stock. This keeps it from tugging downward at the end of the cut. If you choose to do this and you didn't use box joints to hold the sled together, I recommend using spline joints to give it strength. Due to the box we created on the base, it was necessary to cut this part of the box out. It was a difficult cut to make, but it was really worth it having the support on the end. I hogged out the rest of the cut, allowing the blade to sit in the direct center of the jig. This is purely cosmetic, but I wanted to get a good highlight to the hole I had created to prevent damaging the opening later on. To get the nice 90 degree cuts I was after, I used a piece of pine that fit my miter slot and used hot glue to temporarily set it in place.
I drilled a couple quarter inch holes for the bolts that would pass through the pine as well as a pilot hole for the jig itself to attach T-nuts. After tapping and drilling the spines of the T-nut, I carved out a recess so the T-nuts would sit flush with the bottom of the jig, adding epoxy to finish it off. On the pine miter slot bar, I used a countersink bit to finish the holes, allowing the bolts to be flush with the bottom of the bar. This thing cuts like a dream now, and I couldn't help but feel like I was back in my teen years slicing deli ham on the meat slicer. The uniformity of each cut is breathtakingly more accurate and safer than trying to cut on either table saw or miter saw. I switched out the store knob for a Keebler Stripes knockoff and tightened the knurled nuts down. Being able to slice whole round lumber in half safely without trying to build a cumbersome 90 degree sled is amazing with this jig and I really felt like I was in control with the entire cut. I was also surprised at how well slicing layers of wood worked with this jig. I think there's a lot of improvement overall that can be made in future videos, but I'm really excited by what this has to offer so far. If you're a wood turner, there's also the ability to trim down and, and round edges so that you're not dulling chisels, but I really like the ability to create a cross in my wood before transferring it to the lathe. Thank you so much for watching. There are more ideas I have in store for this project. As you can see that the first jig I created had holes on the ends, but due to time, I cut out some of those ideas for now. If you'd like some teaser peeks into some of the ideas I have in store for videos, follow me on my Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob. And remember to keep making things.